Hey, hey, Dr. Sill here, junior doctor from Australia on the psychiatry training program. And today we're going to do another reaction. This may be my most requested reaction ever. Looking at all these comments, it, I mean, they just keep going. It's all, it's all those people requesting Sick Boy by Ren. So I'm all about keeping life simple. So if you guys request a video, I'll make it. So let's get into the reaction. And if you enjoy it, make sure you leave links to other videos that you want me to react to. All right, let's go. Sorry, just pause so early. That, that kind of grunting, like that that he was doing, it's an interesting thing. These these grunts. Um, I guess I'm coming. Uh, I'm getting a memory of a previous patient who used to wail like a like a like a wail. He would he would do kind of wail song. Um, this patient had psychosis, and he would make sounds that sounded like a wail, uh, like the kind of singing like a much less funny version of Dory and Finding Nemo, these kind of big moans. And it was a stress coping mechanism and other, it would be very helpful for him to do it. It would help kind of settle himself, but it was very distressing for other people. And uh, I, I remember another patient being like, 911, 911. Like, obviously the patient, um, th this other patient was also unwell because they were telling me to call 911 and we're in Australia. Uh, but just telling me 911, 911 and was pointing at the other patient. So grunting can be very helpful, but uh, it can affect other people. It can make other people very uncomfortable. And sometimes when you're managing mental illness, it's, all about man it's also about managing the staff's uh, anxiety to someone's mental illness. Because if someone is having a panic attack and everyone else is panicking because they're having a panic attack, that can make the panic attack much worse and it's remaining calm. And, and, and that's where your experience is so important. Like the nurses that have seen panic attacks before, they know how to respond and behave and interact such that they don't make something worse. Um, and if someone's grunting as a means of managing their own anxiety, they know how to respond in the cool, calm, collected, measured response as opposed to being like, ah, code blue, let's go. Anyway, let's keep going. This is very cool. Looking at your file here, it seems there's a very apparent interplay with your emotional state and your physical body. Have you ever heard of the trauma response? I don't think so. Basically, our bodies can get stuck in a negative feedback loop. Our subconscious can repeat patterns from the past, which can have a pretty drastic downstream effect on our biology. Essentially, your mind is moving. Okay, two, uh, three things I want to talk about already. Number one, they're talking about the trauma response and how this uh, doctor or nurse has looked through, the, I'm guessing it's a psychiatrist uh, or a representation of a psychiatrist, has looked through the file and thinks that there's a, a trauma response. So um, maybe Ren's coming with these physical symptoms and it's been told that it's just in his mind and people really see that as a very minimizing and, and almost offensive thing to, to hear. The first point is that absolutely it's possible that um, people's uh, mental state affects their physical state because guess what the brain and the body they're one and some people somatize their um, anxiety their distress so I've had patients who who have had extremely bad abdominal pain or extremely bad back pain and then and it's relating to anxiety and muscle tension now it is a diagnosis of exclusion you have to investigate all other possibilities first if it's a serious threat so if someone comes in with a panic attack and a chest pain and they're thinking they're gonna they're gonna get a heart attack and die when they're in the emergency department you still do the workup for chest pain um, depending on the, the history but you'll still do a troponin ECG chest x-ray and you know a set of bloods and a full exam but in some cases it is someone's um, um, pain, psychic pain manifesting physically and it's important to note that you know emotions do manifest physically like when you know just the other day I, I said something when I was drunk and I was feeling really remorseful and, and kind of cringe like it was just a stupid thing to say and I you know it was no big deal but I was just like oh and like my body tensed up because that cringe that that remorse is a physical manifestation and it causes muscle tightness. So you can imagine someone with chronic anxiety, the muscle pains they get is, is physical pain. It hurts. 
that was the first thing. The second thing was interesting was um, the audio levels. So I, I don't know if it's just mas- like if it's mastered this way or it's just on my audio set or whatever, but I'm finding it a little bit hard to l- hear the nurse from the background music. And that has an interesting effect where it's kind of, I don't know, it, it, that can be very much like what psychosis is like, where you, you can't hear the foreground from the background. And check out my video on aberrant salience and psychosis because this is, it'll help make sense of this, but you don't know what to focus on. And um, I'm finding it hard to focus on what I think I'm meant to be focusing on instead of the background music, which is kind of, I think, dominating. And the third thing I wanted to point about is the flashes of the butcher, which is a recurrent theme now I'm seeing in, in Ren's videos because this is a very similar set to the high Ren. If you haven't seen my high Ren reaction, go check it out. But uh, he's getting flashes and and um, I, they, they seem uh, representative of intrusive thoughts. And anyone with, who's had obsessive compulsive disorder will know that you can get intrusive, um, ego dystonic, you know, uh, thoughts. And ego dystonic means thoughts you don't want, uh, thoughts that are against what your values are. So, you know, violent thoughts or sexually unacceptable thoughts, they just intrude into your mind's eye. And uh, that can be very distressing and, and, and be present in anxiety and and OCD syndromes, and and of course in other mental illnesses. So anyway, those were the three things I wanted to say. Let's keep going. Sick boy, sick boy, bitten by a tick boy, looking for that fix boy, anabolic steroids, stem cell, poster boy, pass out, white noise, quick fix, snake oil, I'm about to break boy. What a shame, he's in pain, have another go Take another pill, here, take a couple more Let's see how you're doing in another week or so You'll be feeling worse when the side effects will show Derealization, medical patient I'll stop there just because I think it's about to go to another point um, Right, yeah, so Ren was bitten by a tick And uh, diagnosed with Lyme disease Which is, um, you know, ticks can carry bacteria And one of the bacterias can cause uh, infection and, and a systemic infection But it can also be sustained into an autoimmune state because of uh, mole- uh, what is it um, molecular mimicry so uh, it's similar to uh, what's called rheumatic heart disease where um, the bacteria has proteins on it that look like proteins in your body and so when your or- when your immune system attacks the bacteria to destroy it it develops antibodies you know those B cells are producing specific antibodies for those proteins but If the protein on the bacteria looks like a protein in your body, then you've got all these antibodies floating in your bloodstream that have been targeted for this um, specific protein uh, epitope. And and, and if you have a a similar protein in your body, well, the the bloody antibody can't tell the difference between the the protein it was meant to attack on on the bug, on the bacteria, versus your own tissue. And so, unfortunately, that's what can happen. And I think that's what happened with Ren. Like, I haven't done an in-depth analysis but I think he had Lyme disease where he's had uh, you know the appropriate immune immune response to the bacteria but then the molecular mimicry of the proteins and the bacteria mean that he also had an autoimmune component to his illness which can cause psychosis if the protein is in neurons and you're getting an autoimmune encephalitis an autoimmune attack on the brain cells the sick twist is that you have to treat that with steroids which can also induce a psychosis but the uh, treat the antipsychotic treatment of psychosis is much easier to treat than the psychosis of a autoimmune encephalitis. So you still treat it. The other thing he's talking about is his, I guess, sense of helplessness or sense of um, nihilism that that no treatments are working and that he's he's losing patience with the process. Essentially, in mental illness, there's two camps. There's the um, like clear camp where you have a good diagnosis and treatments work and then there's the other camp where people have a a vague diagnosis having a unique vague experience Um, and treatments sometimes work and sometimes don't and there's a lot more uncertainty and unfortunately in in psychiatry it's much often the latter where things aren't always a hundred percent things are in the gray area and people want the black and white people want the label but these labels are just you know sets of symptoms that we've seen in in patient groups, you know, so they're not they're not targeted blood tests or imaging, or you know, they're not looking at different neural pathways in your like. If I want to diagnose with someone with a psychosis, I'm not imaging their brain and seeing a pathway in the brain that suggests, aha, this is psychosis. 
I make a judgment based on my experience and studies, uh, and my study of, of the symptoms that I see and how that is, and like what mental illness are these symptoms relating to. And then I give, based on my judgment, a diagnosis, which is why diagnosis can be really hard if someone doesn't have an obvious set of symptoms because we all have our own unique experience. And in psychiatry, if it's an abnormal experience, we're trying to generalize it to a mental illness, like a set of symptoms. So I guess all that to say that uh, psychiatry is really hard and I'm sorry that people suffer as a result of that, but we are all just doing our best. Patients with the process, walking hand in hand with Satan, complications with the medication, inflammation, dehydration, inhalation, aggravation, building up a toleration, drown, soccer, drown, soccer, drown, soccer, drown. I've been feeling like I'm drowning with my feet upon the ground. I've been screaming, I've been shouting, but I never make a sound. I've been looking for a way out, but I always seem to drown. Is this all making sense, Ren? Um, yeah, I think so. Good. That means no. Um, I think so. So this is an interesting one, like how can we improve our reviews with patients so they understand what's happening? Because it's bloody important. Um, I do these videos as part of that so that, uh, you know, there's educational content for my patients to watch and, and learn. Like that's my, I guess, end goal. But I think we need to do better at giving patients like summaries of what we spoke about. But there's just not the resources. Like I just don't have time to do a highlight of the dot points we spoke about in a review to give to a patient. So that's a systems issue. I need to be given more time to do that. If not, it, other people, other patients suffer. So it's a, you know, that, that's a resourcing issue. What I propose we do is we try to pinpoint the exact experiences from the past that are keeping you stuck. What can you tell me about your childhood? Uh, I can't really think. It's okay if nothing comes up right away. What I'd like you to do is take some deep... I love the, um, you know, poor quality, shaky table. Uh, probably representing the foundations of the mental health care system or something like that. That's with me. In and out. In and out. Good. Now tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. I feel like it's not me. It's the world that's sick. We're given everything we need and we commoditize it. We consume, we destroy like we're parasitic. Science tells us that it's suicide and still we come in. I'm not sick. We are sick. Standing on a cliff in the name of progress We jump off the precipice I'm not sick, I'm the virus You're the virus, hypocrite How can you sit there with a smile on and tell me that I'm sick? Sick boy, sick boy looking Very interesting This the song has kind of shifted from a what is it? It's kind of a critique of the challenges in mental illness treatments uh, and the frustration uh, and the injustice that Ren has gone through and it's now shifted to a critique on uh, humanity and uh, how humans are maybe overindulgent and as a result of our you know, capitalist structures and indulgence, we are destroying the earth and over-consuming and, and that kind of thing. So it's interesting to make the, um, the, the comparison between his personal experience and, and issues at a kind of global scale. A fix boy, push it down in public, quick pose for the pick boy. Record label meetings that come on the file, gift boy. Why are you so upset? Don't you want to be a rich boy? Fuck no, industry is top fro. I've been doing bits by myself, swimming back. Ren likes doing this. He, he I'm just noticing in high Ren, he does it in here too. He, what is it? He verbalizes guttural sounds, you know, like <laughs> that kind of thing. Like it's, it's, it's. Um, it's really guttural. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it really, yeah, I don't know. It, it hits you, it hits you down in the tummy rather than, uh, up in the fields. It's, it's pretty, uh, shocking. And, and I, and that's him manifesting, you know, his mental state. That's a psych, that's a psychic pain that he's kind of physically expressing. And it's very cool. Walking on a tight road, rapping with a slit throat. The way that we persist is like the ending of a bad joke. As the people evolve, we're complacent to assailants and we do what we're told. I'm doing the same. Very powerful. I find Ren's music is a, a type of music where you have to sit, watch, and listen and appreciate, kind of like looking at a piece of 
like artwork rather than kind of having it on in the car because it's um, so intense and provocative that uh, it's not nice background music. It's, it's nice foreground music. It, it, it commands your attention. Do you guys feel the same way? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Please leave a comment with any links to other videos you want me to comment and react to. And I wish you all just beautiful days full of love and connection with your friends and family and loved ones. And I will see you all in the next video. All right. Bye for now.